Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Dave Armstrong from Advantest, who's going to talk today about concurrent testing. Dave, we've got a lot of terms being thrown around these days. What is concurrent testing? Concurrent testing is the uh, approach used in a tester and in the design of a product to allow circuitry to be simultaneously tested. This is more real life. I mean, you make an IC and you have many cores in it and all the cores are busy all the time. Why do we test one core at a time? It's slow and it's not the way the part is really used. And so how many cores are we actually talking about testing when we're doing concurrent testing? We're talking about billion uh, gate chips, we're talking about uh, 16, 32 cores in a, a chip. Well, what you're describing there is more the MPU scenario, and yes, MPUs are getting 32, 64 cores in the not too distant future. The challenge is the SOC scenario. There the core counts can go quite a bit higher, and more importantly, the cores are different. Each core is not the same as the other core. This really drives the test time up, the test data volume up, and really causes problems and challenges for all of us. Well, heterogeneous multi core is becoming a much bigger problem for sure and it's becoming a bigger problem from the design side from the standpoint of how the cores actually interact and what they're doing when they are interacting as well as when they're asleep. So how do you manage to test all the different pieces? Are we testing when they're on, when they're functioning and all on at once or are we testing different power domains? In general the philosophy is to try and test all similar or identical cores all cores that are communicating with each other simultaneously, together if you will. Um, the reality is when you get into a large number of cores, people cannot afford the time to design, at least not in my experience, each one of them individually. You know, that those large part, parts with so many transistors have many copies of cores, even if you talk about them being heterogeneous, they may have multiple analog ports, they may have multiple video interfaces, etc. Okay, why don't you draw this out for us? What are we looking at? So, what I've drawn here actually is an APU device, which is perhaps not as uh, radical as some of the parts you were just describing, but it has the elements of that are challenging us, and it will probably be able to show us better how to do the concurrent test. So what I have in this APU is I have a quad-core processor, I have a GPU, flash memory, a DRAM, and some sort of high-speed interface, a PHY interface. So if we were going to test this, there's some easy things we can do to do concurrent testing, things that people don't necessarily think about up front. First off, these type of products these days are getting a lot of power supply inputs. Well, those power supplies all need to be tested and you certainly ought to be testing them concurrently. The challenge is you got a bunch of digital pins down here as well. Why not go ahead and test those for their DC performance, their input leakage current as well? It's a, it's a low-hanging fruit, but it's, it's a simple little thing to do, and it can get you some, uh, some, some test time savings. The challenge is that you need to have a, a system that has sequencer per pin capability to control all these re resources to do the test all at the same time. So what I wanted to do here was list off what are some of these uh, concurrent test approaches that we can do. So we could do DC testing, input leakage together. And typically that's a small percentage of the time, maybe 5% of the test time. If you can reduce that in half, you might get 2 to 3% test time savings. And the thing you need for that is need sequencer per pin DCs. So this is almost testing version of what becomes multiprocessing for a processor, right? You're doing multiple things at once. Yeah, another way that people have looked at that is it's taking multi-site testing and running it on one chip at a time. So in the old days we would have different parts, you know, you might have a processor test uh, that's, that you have a quad-core test. Why don't we test all four processors in a multi-site environment is what we did in the past. 
Now, in concurrent testing, why don't we test all four processors simultaneously in one device? And will this work the same way for testing multiple uh, blocks of SRAM that are scattered around a chip as well? Um, there's some trade-offs in testing SRAM because what you're going to have is you're going to have some small SRAM and you're going to have some medium and some large. And what people typically do is the small parts, typically it's not worth putting BIST circuitry associated with them. But the, and the, the medium parts, typically they will put BIST circuitry. What's interesting though is the large parts, like what I've drawn here, you may not want to put the BIST circuitry. Certainly you could put an MBIST circuit here and you could test it MBIST wise, but that's a lot of transistors. Oftentimes these DRAMs are available externally and maybe you just use the capability of the ATE for an ALPG, that's an algorithmic pattern generator, and that will give you full capabilities to test the DRAM, get more of the error information, get uh, a redundancy repair, a lot of things that MBIST is very difficult to do. So large DRAMs, my thought is use the, the ATE, the automatic test equipment. Medium-sized RAMs, use MBIST. And small RAMs around the device, use normal vectors. Again, though, try and program it for individual operation. Any difference in terms of accuracy of the test, or is this strictly a time and circuitry type of trade-off? For the DRAM testing, it's simply a time and circuitry trade-off. You know, we, we keep adding circuitry to the die to help with the test time. And at some point, we got to start thinking about how much additional die area we're taking up for all of that stuff. So there's a trade-off here. That's one of the trade-offs that I think is worth making. What happens when we move into a um, stack die configuration, which has always been one of the big uh, problems looming for test? Does this type of approach help it, or does, is it just one more thing that you throw at it? Perfect question. And uh, just the same as I was talking before about the uh, move from multi-site test to concurrent test, now if you can do a concurrent test in multi-site, what do you do? You, it's basically, again, multi-site testing of different die in this case, and you absolutely have to um, do concurrent testing in that environment. You know, concurrent uh, 3D stacking is going to change the dynamics of Moore's Law quite significantly. You know, we're supposed to double every three years, but now with 3D stacking, the density of transistors in one device is just going to go up through the roof. We have to do something different. And concurrent test, I think, is our best bet at taming that test time cost. So does it allow us to stay current with all the different things that we have to test? The complexity is just going up probably exponentially as opposed to doubling every couple years. Oh, absolutely. It is going up exponentially and as opposed to doubling every three years. Um, are we staying current? Um, there's a lot of us who feel like we're not. Uh, ATE vendors are in a lot of pressure to reduce the cost of test. And, and that's why I wanted to bring up this topic of concurrent testing because in order to do concurrent test effectively, we have to design it in. And, and I'm an example of that here, if you like. Sure, absolutely. Um, this quad-core processor, one way that you might test that or you might think about doing that would be to minimize the number of scan chains. I drew a blue scan chain here. Well, that's not very efficient use of the, uh, the capability and it's certainly not a concurrent test. An alternative approach, which would be vastly superior, would be to take each one of these processors out individually. What do we gain? So more pins, more scan pins in and out would allow us to basically test these four processors concurrently. Now, if you look at that uh, carefully, and I have, typically the scan test time is about 70% of the test. And uh, here, you're basically dropping it down by 75%. So you can see very quickly, so more scan, oh. 
70 times 75, what is that, about 50%? The challenge with that now is people don't want to necessarily put more scan pins on. So what can we do? Well, why do it that way? Why not take this scan input pin, since these are copy-pasted blocks, and run it simultaneously to all four processors? So this is the testing of homogeneous IP blocks concurrently, but it has to be designed into the part. Two benefits. One, you now have one pin driving all four tests. And two, the length of the scan chains all of a sudden became quite a bit less. That means less data volume. That means faster pattern loads. That means faster test time. So the actual benefit here is more than simply 70% of my test time times 75. 75% reduction, it's actually more than that because the tests are actually shorter. So using heterogeneous, uh, I'll call it parallel scan, to identical you can get 60 or 70% test time reduction. Sounds like you're toggling a lot of circuits there though. So what happens in terms of the power? Because really what you're doing is turning things on and off and actually blasting this chip with a lot of power too, right? Yeah, scan patterns are inherently the most power, power consuming patterns in the device. So if you're having four parts all toggling simultaneously, you could have some problems. Uh, there's a number of different ways around that. Uh, I've seen people add delay for one block versus another so they don't all toggle simultaneously even though they're all in the same scan chain. The ADA vendors have some uh, tools that will provide low power patterns for this type of an approach where they specifically don't toggle all the pins at the same time. And my personal favorite answer, if your power distribution block can handle it, is perhaps a better ATC control automatic thermal control of the part. Don't let it heat up. And there are a number of solutions out there that, allow, that will be able to handle the added power distribution or uh, challenges associated with this. So you can go ahead and do what you've been doing all along, do it concurrently, save the test time uh, without hardly any changes. So you've got flash testing and you've got phi testing and the flash is interesting because it's different on, there, there are many different types of uh, patterns that go into the flash, and then the phi is, is lots of different pieces as well. How do you deal with all those differences? Well, basically, uh, flash testing, you have to be able to read. Sometimes you need to program different data in each one of the devices that you're testing, and oftentimes you need to be able to receive different data. You may have different cal factors and the like. So patterns per site, now we're talking multi-site again, but basically, reading out and or driving in patterns per site become very important. The other thing that goes with that in a per pin architecture, per pin per site, for the phi testing is clocks per site. We need to be able to generate all these different clocks and phi's always have their own little clock rates that you need to make sure to precisely handle. And you don't want to waste a bunch of pins while doing that. So there's a number of things that we need in order to make this whole thing work. Given all the things that you've talked about here, are we able to keep up and do we have to really rethink how we test from probably more of a systems approach about what makes sense where and when? What we need to do is we need to start planning for tests earlier in the design process. We need to think this stuff through. And in doing that, you'll be able to save a lot of time. The mo the the smallest uh, return on concurrent test improvement I've seen is around 25 or 30 percent. And I've seen some up to 70 percent test time savings. But you've got to do it early in the process. This is not all ATE solutions. Redesigning the scan chain architecture is something that has to ha happen during design. And that has by far the biggest payback of everything I've looked at. Dave Armstrong, thanks very much for a great explanation. Thank you.